Okay team, uh, today I'm going to show you how to break down a full snapper. So utilising every part of a snapper and uh, not wasting it. So so many people throw out the hidden frames, dump it into a bin when uh, they could use it and make some good food and simple food. I'm no uh, super master chef, by all means I'm a, a terrible cook. So today I'm just going to show you a couple of really easy ways to prepare and make some food and utilise a whole snapper. I caught this Friday night at about 9.30 at night in Kinnapuru. It's uh, now Sunday. I've had it in the fridge overnight. Um, talking to a chef mate, Dan, he reckons if you leave them overnight uh, on salt ice in the fridge, they actually set a lot better. Okay, so with this snapper here, I've actually uh, scaled it already and gutted it. I would uh, show you, I will show you in the future actually, a video on all the gut parts that you can eat, like the heart, the liver, and also the roe. So you can smoke them or fry them. But for today's purposes, I'm just gonna show you how to fully break down a snapper. Rightio, so to start with, uh, just filleting. I'm using a knife cut knife. I've used lots of knives, this one doesn't rust. I'm not a knife sharpener, so I like to use an electric sharpener, uh, dare I say it but I've got a $39 electric sharpener. It sharpens all my Blackmagic bait knives. These knives as well. They say it loses the blade after a while, but um, I've not really had an issue with it, and I can't sharpen with a stone, so there I said it. Um, so, when you're filleting, you want to get the start up just on the side fin there, come down, and if you hit your knife, or angle your knife towards the tail, you'll actually hit a smooth spot and you'll be able to run your knife all the way down to the tail. And then you've got to go through, right through the side, and out. And you want to make sure you leave right down the bottom end. There's not much uh, meat on there, but you want to, you'll need that to get the skin off. And then what you're going to do is just slowly hack away up, bring your knife back up towards the head, and up there, and then on the other side, I just like to run the knife down and come up right up to the start of the gut cavity and then on the inside here you can feel those hard ribs there or the spine you're going to come up on an angle and right up towards the head and then from there you're going to come down I'll come under that fin with the knife and then just make my way down So there is one fillet. The one thing also to do is wash the fish down. So wash down with fresh water outside before you start filleting. Get rid of all that slime, leftover scales, and all those bits and pieces. Right, the same on the other side. Start under that side fin. Right up there towards the head, get all that meat out, and then Aiming the knife down towards the tail. Get all the way down. Surprisingly, how many scales are left over after you scale them. From there on the other side, go over that spine. Now the beauty of this, because we're not wasting any of the fish, doesn't matter if you've got meat left on there, that's actually going to suit um, well. Because what we're going to do with the head and frame is we're going to make a seafood chowder. Right, so all the way along there. And then there, bring your knife up on an angle. And then under that fin there, and make your way down over the top of those ribs. Be the first to admit that I am no legendary filleter. Still feel a few scales on me. That's the sides. Right, so the next thing, uh, 
removing the head from the spine and you're going to use all these wings we want to use all those wings so there's a little uh if you spin that side to side there's a little notch there so if you run your knife in there and up towards the head you'll separate those wings so you can just see it there if you spin it right there there you go crack that head up and then that's your wings so we'll take them off whoa watch that don't drop your knife Right, so before you actually start filleting, what you probably want to do is get a uh, pot to ball the head in, big enough to fit the head and uh, most of the frame. Okay, from there all you have to do is crack the head and that should come apart quite easily. But just take the head off, just have to crack it. Right, and then you've got the spine so it's going to break that in half that's just so I can fit it in the pot so you want to bring a pot to the boil if there's any sort of stuff in here that you don't want like the blood bits get all them out but it's pretty clean we gutted it out there right so what we're going to do next is we're going to put the head and the frame into a pot a boiling pot and we're going to boil it so with the pot boiling I'm actually going to put squeeze some lemon into it and I want to make it clear that I by no means am a good chef. The problem is you just watch all these fishing shows and I watch them and they make all these fancy chowders with all these ingredients and that and uh, I don't know how to do it and it's torturous so I'm going to show you how to make a real simple easy chowder that everyday Joe Bloss can do without uh, watching super chefs do it on TV. So this is going to be nice and simple. So we're going to do a couple of dishes uh, on this, we're going to do raw fish, we're going to do cooked fish and we're going to do a seafood chowder out of one fish. So that's boiling now, so I'm going to put the, the heat in the frame in there. I'm going to bring that to the boil and that's going to be the base for our seafood chowder. And all the meat from the head and the frame is going to be for the chowder. Heat and frame are now boiling, you don't want to boil them long, probably about 5 minutes. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the fillet off the skin. So the bone line down the back there, you just want to feel that and then bring the knife down either side of it. Okay, from the tail end, you're going to pull the skin, hold the skin, get a good grip, but you're going to sort of aim the knife upwards. That way, you should be able to run through that fillet. Right, so there you got one fillet, and there you've got the other. So that skin there, we're just going to stick aside in the meantime, but there is one nice fillet. So if you don't like that strong fish taste, that's those blood bits. The blood bits down the side here, so you can actually chop them off and discard them. That gives it that super, super strong fish taste. That, or you can also add them to your seafood chowder broth if you want to. Right, so that's two fillets. Also a good thing to do is uh, clean off your bait board or your fish filleting board between, uh, between fish. Now the skin. So we scale the skin, the next thing we want to do is chop off any of this excessive uh, fillet that we have missed. It's quite a delicate procedure. Quite messy. Same thing there. You're going to want to get rid of those bones because they go right out to the edge of the skin. Once that's all cleaned up, we're just going to wash that, wash the skin and then we're just going to dry it off. So with some paper towels.
all these little bits that you've taken off the skin, they can be used in the chowder as well. So to make sure that fillet, or that skin, sorry, is all cleaned off, dry, I'm just gonna salt that down. Do that on both sides. Next thing, chuck your oven on, and you wanna go on to quite high, 180, and you're gonna put it on maxi grill. Now these uh, shrink quite a bit, so what you're gonna do is chop them into decent sized portions. So, like so, and then you're just gonna space them out onto your oven tray. That's all sorted. So place them on the oven tray, chuck them in the oven. Make sure you keep an eye on them because they burn really quick. It's a fine line between burning and crispy. So keep an eye on them. Okay, so next we're gonna do the raw fish dish and it's gonna be a lemon and hot Mexican chili sauce. You can, if you don't like hot or spicy stuff, uh, you can probably just get standard chili sauce or whatever chili sauce you like, but I love the uh, Woodlock's hot Mexican stuff. Right, so what we're gonna do is just chop it into little squares, straight up the middle there. And then just chop straight across. The thing is with doing raw fish, it's pretty easy. You can add this with anything you like. Like whatever flavor, you can have it with wasabi and black sauce or um, sesame oil and there's probably right and wrong ways to chop this and do this but you know, let's be fair uh, I'm no master chef and I'll never claim to be but it's more so about utilizing this whole fish and coming up with heaps of different dishes out of that one fish it's probably a 10 pound fish so I'm just going to get a bowl once you've done that Going to put it all into the bowl and this is going to be super easy the only problem is with doing fish you're constantly uh, washing your hands which is not really a pain but so I'm just going to do a lemon you can use lime as well but just squeeze some lemon juice in there and if you actually leave coated in lemon juice and leave it for quite a few hours it will uh, actually cook the fish but then your sweet uh, sweet Thai chili or hot Mexican chili I'm using I'm just going to tip that in depending on how much you want and just stir all that up and the other thing that's going to add some good flavor to it is uh, fresh coriander that was a part I said I wanted to make it easy like your fresh herbs and stuff I actually just went into New World today and uh, bought a little plant for $3, a little uh, coriander plant. So if I can look after that, I've just got that fresh coriander at home. And then we're going to chop up that coriander. My knife skills are about as good as uh, my cooking skills. I'm going to chuck that coriander in there. Give it a good stir up. Probably add a few more, a wee bit more lemon in there. And I actually think I could probably use a bit more. Grab a fork and test it out. Yeah, that's pretty good actually. That's probably one of the easiest raw fish dishes you could ever do. A bit of lemon juice or lime, a sweet Thai chili, I'm using hot chili, and uh, some fresh coriander. Probably add some salt and pepper in there, but that's nice and easy. So that's one dish you can use with your snapper. Checking on the fish skins, they've still got a long way to go, but you need to keep a good eye on them. And they come along quite good. We'll keep them in there for about another five, ten minutes. 
until they're real crunchy. One fillet and the skin, we've made a raw fish dish, a hot chilli one. Now the second side, what we're going to do is have the skin on and we're going to do crispy skin uh, snapper. So all you're going to do is run your knife down one side of that spine, or those bones, just feel where the bones are, and the same on the other side. Run your knife down, and you should be able to just remove that hole. The skin's always quite tough. Righty, I actually flip that over, and we've got the skin on there. So we'll just chop that into size bits we want. And this is all personal too. Uh, by no means, like I said before, am I any professional chef or have any skills at cooking whatsoever. But I just wanted to show you that that whole frame of this fish can be utilized and you can do heaps of different dishes with it. Instead of throwing them and discarding them into the mingy old rubbish bin down the Port Nelson. Right, so same thing there. All your fish scraps and all the little bits we're gonna use in the chowder, so don't throw any of them out. But we'll cut all them up, and so they can be used. Um, just pan fried like that, cooked in the oven with a bit of flour and a bit of butter, anything like that. So that's the other side. What we're gonna do now is uh, get a pot and take uh, the hidden frame out, and we're gonna make a seafood chowder out of that. Right, so we'll grab the pot. So out of one fish, you can make so many different dishes for your family and friends that they won't get sick of the fish. That's if you do get sick of fish. So this part here can be quite messy. But you can see all that fish on all those bones and that there. Take all the head and frame out, and then we're just gonna sift that uh, leftover water into a, uh, another pot, ready for the chow. Next thing I'm going to do is we're going to strip all the meat off the head and the frame and put it into a bowl and uh, get ready for the chowder. Bit of a messy job taking all the meat off the frame but it's uh, well worth it in the end. Next thing we're going to do the seafood chowder. Um, you can put in a chowder whatever you like. Uh, I just put whatever I've got. People say don't put peas in, don't put this in, it's just a chowder. Just put whatever you like in the chowder and uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, onions, I'm going to put an onion in. It's a white onion. I don't know if you need to have a specific coloured onion but I'm using white because it's left over from Friday night's tea. I'm just going to chop this up, put oil and butter, and fry it up in a pan. I think my knife skills are about as good as my culinary skills, which uh, I fear to say, not the best. So chop up your onion, and with a bit of butter and oil, I'm going to cook it in the pot that I'm going to put the chowder in. But put a slab of butter in there, a bit of oil, and just going to brown up these onions. Also, you're going to put in some bacon, a few strips of uh, ration bacon. That's if you want to. 
Everyone keeps telling me I need to put bacon in the chowder and I was always like, why? So I thought for once, I'm gonna put some bacon in the chowder. Chowder is one of the best, best dishes you can use for like just your fish or your frames or anything like that. And you can just make them however you want. So a couple strips of bacon in there. I'll do three for good luck. Like I said, this is not really a, 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 a special cooking show. It's just trying to utilize the frame and show you guys a couple of ways of using the frame from someone that has no idea how to cook. I think by the end of this, I'll probably have about 20 uh, dish towels that I need to clean. So I'm just going to brown all that up. Chuck in a bit of pepper with that as well. And I've got heaps of meat out of that here, but I'm actually going to probably put some more meat in as well, some actual fillets. I like to have corn in the seafood chowder. So I've just got some frozen corn, a couple of handfuls of whatever you think in there. Give it a good stir up, add the corn if you want corn, add vegetables, add whatever you want. Uh, now I'm going to use the broth that I cooked the hidden frame with and most chowders can either be thick or runny so you just add the broth to whatever suits. I personally like a thicker chowder but today I'm actually going to try a runny chowder. So once that's browned up we're just going to add some of the broth that we cooked the hidden frame with. To make this chowder runny as. Also, I've got some fresh mussels off of me, so I'm going to chop up some mussels and put them in as well. But I chopped up some more fresh fish and I'm going to chuck that in now. So I ended up putting three cups of broth in. I guess at the end you could just uh, add more to suit whatever um, texture you want it, texture or thickness. I'm just going to chop these mussels in half. Some of them still have the tongue in, so we'll get rid of them. What I'm going to do is chop up some of these mussels real fine, just to get that mussel flavour right through. I'm actually pretending like I know what I'm talking about, but I don't. I just think. Cooking shouldn't be as technical as everyone makes it out to be. Right, we're gonna add those mussels to the chowder. We're gonna add the snapper head and frame meat in. And I can already see that it's looking uh, like it's thickening up, so I'm gonna add some more of the broth from the frame in the head. Now the flavor of the chowder, lots of recipes to make up a chowder mix, but let's be fair, I'm not a cook, so I want it simple as. So I've got the Good Taste Company fish and wine chowder recipe. So this stuff here, all you have to do is tip this in a pot, add whatever seafood you want, some cream, some milk, some broth, whatever, and you can make awesome chowders. It's got all the mix and everything in there already. So this is an easy way to make a chowder. Right, so I'm gonna add this into the uh, broth in the pot now. Give it a good stir up. We're going to add some garlic to it. Just chop up the garlic fine. Add that into the mix. You want to add some fresh parsley to that. If you've got fresh parsley. I went and bought some again today, like a little plant. The plant was like $2.99. And I thought, well, I can try and grow it, keep it alive. Which realistically, I probably won't keep it alive. It'll die. No good at looking after plants. Right, with the seafood chowder cranking in the background, next I'm going to have uh, some of that raw fish. Uh, and I've turned off the oven, the crackling's done, this is the fish skin crackling, so we're going to plate up some of that. Oh, yeah, that crunchy as. Yes. I've let that uh, 
raw fish sit in the fridge for a wee while. Just going to plate some of that. Then the crackling, put some of that on the crackling. Sweet Thai chili raw fish with a snapper skin crackling. That's exceptional. You've got all the fat in the skin here, and you can just taste all that fat from the snapper. Yeah. So instead of wasting the skin, you can eat the skin as crackling, and it's awesome. Last thing we're going to add to the chowder is some cream. Uh, you don't have to use cream, but uh, it, it sort of thickens it up and it makes it a bit more, uh, gives it a bit more sweeter flavour to it. So add some cream if you want cream. Once you added the cream, just turn it to low and pretty much it's done, it's ready to go. Okay team, so hopefully now that might inspire you to not to waste uh, any part of the snapper and keep the hidden frames and use all of it. Uh, like I said, I'm no uh, master chef and have very little uh, cooking skills, but uh, even I can make uh, some really good dishes and really simple dishes uh, with very little skill. So uh, hopefully that helps you out and you won't waste those frames. But uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on the vlog.